the president tweeting everybody is talking about John Podesta. Our Jeff Zeleny is traveling with the president, says that nobody is talking about Podesta over there, which would make sense because why would you be? Uh, why does the president, what does he gain by tweeting that? Yeah, I, I think, Aaron, he has the ability to play games or, you know, on lots of different levels. And, um, and I don't mean a game necessarily, although Van might say it is a game. But I, I think he does keep people off balance. He's unpredictable. It's something that the American people are captivated by. And they enjoy the fact that he is like the rest of us. When we get on our own Twitters, we say emotional things. We say spontaneous things. And uh, in this case, I have to say, it's a substantive <laughs> question. Or we um, consider well, it unprofessional and we don't. But that's well, some not, of us. Well, yes, yeah, some would. But look at uh, Podesta's response to him. He got down in the gutter immediately and fair. called the president of the United States a whack job. So, but but I think <laughs> it's it's a, it, it's a substantive question. Why isn't there an investigation about Podesta when he was on the government payroll, sitting on the board of a company that was doing fair, business okay. with with fair uh, to raise Russia? that question today, right before the Putin meeting, Van. Uh, no, it's not. You know, part of what's so sad is that. Uh, this is a summer when the United States is facing probably its gravest threat since World War II. We have an actual madman in North Korea with actual nu nuclear missiles who is apparently now able to hit Hawaii and Alaska, American soil. That should be full stop the agenda for the United States, to rally the world to stop the threat. Mm -hmm. I have no love lost for George W. Bush, but when he just thought that Saddam Hussein might have uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction. He rallied the world. He tried to, at least. We are in a situation where a, somebody who, listen, if it, on Saddam Hussein's worst day, he could still be the psychiatrist for Kim Jong-un. This guy is totally crazy, and we're not talking about real threats. We're talking about John Podesta. We're talking about John so, Podesta this summer? He, it's but, nuts. But, he's, but Van, that's the, the genius of Donald no. Trump. He's not talking about uh, John Podesta. His critics are. What, what he's talking about is selling Patriot missiles to Poland. He's talking about NATO putting in more money in their defense budget. He's the guy no. who dropped 59 Tomahawk missiles in Syria on Russian in, back in your, troops. In your, um, listen, when you, in, when you are in your little bathtub with your rubby ducky and telling yourself these stories, that's wonderful. And I'm sure it sounds great to you. <laughs> but, but the rest I, of the I, I country have, is have looking. I don't have any rubber duckies. That's interesting the, you would say that. <laughs> speaking saying, of, the speaking of, the, of pulling the, a debate to the, the high the, ground. <laughs> the, the rest of the country is looking looking at what they're actually seeing, which is somebody who, when he's given a script and something to say and to do, he apparently can do a decent job. But the minute that he runs into the restroom or into the closet and can get his phone out, he starts doing nutty stuff. And it's you, not good for America. And you can't pretend it's good for America. There's Van, nothing genius about it. If this Van, is genius, then we got a bunch of genius kindergartners. Van, I actually was thinking about you yesterday, and I am absolutely <laughs> being serious about this. You said during his State of the Union address that he became the president of the United States. I think yesterday his address to Poland was just as important. I think it was a magnificent speech. Even Democrats on some of the charts showed it. They gave him a C. Republicans, of course, gave him an A plus. But independents gave him a B on it. That's what uh, multiple focus I groups said that because I think it was such a great speech speech. It did well, I'm show. glad that you're proud, you're proud of that speech. I think he has been presidential the whole time. Nixon. Nixon <laughs> was president the whole time, and he, was a, he, was, he, he had very little respect for that office. And I think Donald Trump, when he does stuff like this, shows little respect for the office. He shows little respect for the American people. So, and I'm going to tell you, I just want to say one last Van, thing. Okay. The summer before 9-11, we spent the whole summer talking about Gary Condit and Shonda Le Levy and distracting ourselves while enemies plotted and gathered. And I'm telling you right now, you've got a plot gathering against this country from but, North Korea, and we're talking about so, everything but that because but a lot of the headlines. President. Okay, hold on. Let me just get in here. The headlines that Trump got um, from, from just from today, on the day of the tweet, right? Trump confronts Putin on election hacking. U.S. and Russia reach a deal on Syria ceasefire. U.S. labor market roars back. I mean, these are from CBS News, The Washington Post, The New York Times. I mean, I guess they're all fake news, right? So it must all be <laughs> untrue, Congressman. Um, uh, although know, I bet that the president would be happy to accept these headlines because they flatter him. Um, I, I th go ahead. 
Well, I think he will. I think th this is just part of Donald Trump, and those who dislike him and those who lo love him just have to accept it as part of him. But I do think what he is doing right now in Europe is very important, and I agree with Van. North Korea should be an international focal point, and that's why sitting down with uh, President Putin is so important, and yet the American press seems to um, uh, some of the people who were on your last panel, for example, Aaron, who, who did not think he, he raised the Russian issue enough, I would, I would have hope well, that have those equal people curiosity. One was, was uh, the former CIA director and Trump advisor, uh, uh, Director but, Wolsey, so, so a far cry from a uh, natural Trump critic. Uh, but, but, but they should be equally as concerned. Well, how much time in this two-hour meeting, which was supposed to be a 30-minute meeting, how much time was dedicated to North Korea and how much was uh, dedicated to terrorism, how mm -hmm. much was dedicated to Syria? And I think that should be more of a focal point than did he press enough. And by the way, I can't believe that they're going to accept Lavrov's word over Tillerson. It's just unbelievable okay. to me. Go ahead, Van. Final word. Well, I just think that we have to respect the fact that, yeah, the president did got some stuff right on this trip. That's great. People, I, listen, I think most Americans would love to see him do that kind of stuff. But nobody can look at only one side of the sandwich. you got to look at both sides. And when the other side has a whole bunch of crap in it, it's hard to eat that meal.